Well, hello, 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 and welcome. I hope you're all doing really well today. Um, it is a huh, Wednesday. I had planned this and scheduled this and thought I was doing a Monday video, forgetting I had already done a Monday video. So today I am sort of dubbing over uh, my video, and it's not all going to make sense, but we are going to work on the inside panels. As you see, we've got decorations on the front front envelope. I use some of our laces and that new little embroidery piece to keep things sort of tucked down. And of course, you know, the tag behind it so we can tuck things into it. I used fabric on the top and bottom here to help cover up that white envelope spacing and help reinforce things. So we'll do the same thing inside um, once we've got the paneling done, but it definitely seems to be holding things together. Um, so we have those inside pockets and things that are all going to hold everything in place. So some of my voices are not going to match what you see in my hands, I'm afraid. But we do have lots of pockets and things to fill. Um, and I'm really loving what we've done so far. So yeah, uh, probably this weekend will be some kind of scrappy Saturday to where I can fill all these pockets and make things work. So I do apologize that when my hands do not match my text and my verbiage. But I didn't want to waste a great project that we've been working on. So um, we are today going to work on the inside. Um, yeah, okay, so I definitely want to do some work. Uh, we're going to work on the inside. There's some ideas for this panel um, that you'll probably see in a short later in the week um, and how I want to do a little bit of a tuck into this this framework and you could just see it as a window pocket, like a little window pocket. So um, definitely keep your eyes out for that and to see a YouTube short um, on me working on that. But today we're going to cover up the inside panels. Um, we are going to work on the little uh, brown envelope. I am trying to decide though whether we're going to match it to this panel. Uh, the inside panels are going to match this sort of outer panel or whether we're going to continue on with more of the flowery things. I was trying to use a cluster of you know three different four different si sets of kits and papers and um, I just you know I didn't I don't know it's it definitely took a while there's a lot of great ideas but I didn't want to be too heavy with just one paper kit you know that covers up her face. So I'm having a hard time. I like the idea of her there, and I think in the end I totally forgot about that, and we went a different direction. I definitely went back and forth quite a bit in um, trying to figure out the best way to do this. Um, in the end, it turns out really well. I am really happy with it, um, with room to maneuver and things to play with. But yeah, we're tr I'm trying to do everything. And when we have scraps, um, it's going to allow us to do a nice master board to tie it all together. So... Yeah, there's just, I, there was a lot of really pretty paid pieces in, in this one uh, collage paper set that I have, and I want to use it all. So, you know, I do like this teal one. Um, it's a tealy mint, uh, green and beige, you know, ordeal, and it has great options. But I'm, I was sort of debating because our top piece to our little mini f folder there is very green, not mint, minty or teal. So the green sort of clash, and I had a hard time with that. It's one thing to have a completely different um, ordeal. And the gold fabric, I didn't know if I liked on top of with that teal also. So that was the other problem. I'm like, mm, I want something that maybe looks a little bit better with that go two-tone gold and beige fabric that we're going to put across the top and bottom that you see where, you know, around the gold aspect of our envelope. So there's a lot of hemming and hawing. I'm trying to look at all the different pages and organize things because I just can't handle it. Now, I did speed up this um, this whole video just a little bit, down to about 36 minutes compared to the 55 it was because there are some spots where I am, like you see me now, I'm hemming and hawing and cleaning up and I don't want to cut and paste too much. I don't want to miss anything, but it gives me a chance to talk to you guys and work our way through this. So this one I want to keep and there's that page that could be worked on, but I think what I don't use of those is going to make help, great help for our... Um, ephemera. We have some really large squared ephemeras, uh, car journal cards that we need to make. For like this, just this inside of this folder alone, are very large square journal cards. So it's a majority of our master our master board pages are probably going to be right in there. So we'll put the papers aside. Um, cause I don't think we're going to use that. I'm going to try to find some other page other pages to use on the inside panels here. But today we will definitely get this little guy all cleaned up and we'll start out with our envelope. These are our newer um, three size coin envelopes or a nice little, you know, craft page. Now, I did find this, this lace is one of my favorites, came out of my grandmother's stash, I believe. Um, my mom gave it to me, so it's either hers and or my grandmother's. Every so often I get a chunk of lace to use. 
um, it's really light and we can overlap it to the front also to sort of bring elements back and forth lace to the front fabric to the inside flowers you know um, so that we have some consistency and we have um, uh, what's the word uh, continuous stuff to go through that ties it all together so probably once I get the paper panels down then I can get the lace tucked underneath the envelope on top of the paper and away we go so as usual we're gonna ink everything um, just to give it that more worn vintage feel because as much as we love old stuff and as much as we love new stuff you know we got to sort of make it blend together so these are the new lighter craft uh, coin envelopes um, they come in three sizes now as large as eight inches when the flap is open down to I think less than three this is the medium one the small the small one is on the front cover um, as I mentioned before so those are in the shop to get a bundle of th all, uh, three sizes three of each size so it's a nice little bundle to play with uh, whenever you need it but those are in the shop I think a lot of the stuff I've already linked in other videos so you can go back and look um, to see what's going on now with this one we are going to put lace on the bottom so thankfully I left myself a note because I would have forgot I was working on the front panels and I was like where was I going to put lace where was I going to put lace and then when I started this video I was like oh that's right lace was going on the bottom of this of this envelope because we are not um, covering this envelope front because we're going to use the the coin coin um, coin envelope coin bag whatever you want to call it so we'll put a little lace on the bottom and we'll cover the inside instead um, and we're gonna have some fun trying to cover this we have a couple different ways we can cover the inside and I do come up with a brainstorm of epiphany of course halfway through this it finally occurs to me how to do so to cover it you know uh, verbatim without you know I don't have the ability to take off the envelope and play with it so it's like oh yeah I need to sort of work this now I'm not going to cover the inside of the envelope because it is a nice beigey color I love it we don't need it's not white it's not you know like the yellow one where we have the security in it we can leave it the way it is and the everything else will sort of take care of that problem which is great um give me one second ladies I have to pause all right so sorry about that um here I'm chit chatting around but I got a phone call and I had to take it on so it is what it is um Oh, sorry. I'm getting used to this. I have a new program, so I'm trying to rework this, and it's a little odd for me. I'm not used to it. So, yeah, um, we're going to cover up and give sort of a, a layered feel over the flap. So we have some decor, just like we did for the front. Um, I'm not perfectly covering it like we did the little front one. We're going to just sort of lay it over it, and I think even at the end, I add a few more layers as I'm walking out the door, um, which is great. So... Sorry, yeah, hopefully I don't have to pause and unpause too many times because it's like a three to three second delay to re start the recording again. And I'm like, Ugh. so if there's a little bit of a, of a, of a blurb or a ah, it's dead air, dead air, just give me a second, you know. Um, I do apologize. Like I said, this isn't going to be a perfect matchup. It's not going to be a perfect everything because my hands are moving to what I was talking about, which makes absolutely no sense on a Wednesday. And um, seemed like a lot of repeat, which I didn't have a whole lot to talk about. So I guess it's sort of a good thing that I'm redoing this. Now we've got a couple of days on my belt. It's Wednesday. You know, we can go that way. But it was a good weekend. Uh, the week's been nice. It's been foggy in the morning. And, you know, I, we actually got to, um, like, high 70s on Tuesday. And I'm like, yay. But we're back down to 64 by the weekend. So whatever. We're not getting snow or rain. But, you know, we're getting, luckily, our very light um, spring weather. So I did come across a couple laces I'm debating on. And I think this is going to work. I know it feels really white. And I could do the acro um, lace that we have in the shop. But I think because of the white flower piece that I'm putting on the envelope, we can get away with the white lace um, to sort of break up some of our, you know, a lot of all of our creams and whatnot. So I pull a little white in, which would be okay. Plus the white there and then the off-white on the side, we have different, you know, elements. It's okay. It's okay to, you know, to... To mix and match. Um, luckily, I did put mar nar marks in the paper already when I was trying to eyeball that um, earlier. I am going to deckle it because you know me, I like the deckled edges when I'm sort of doing a matte feel um, to any kind of panel work. Um, there's just more texture, it gives us more layers, it just gives us more interest when we are um, covering things up. And of course, I didn't quite uh, rip or cut far enough up. That's okay. Oh, we do what we do because I didn't want to cut out too much. I didn't want to make too many pieces. I want to be able to go back and, and rip it for our masterboard and our collaging so that I'm not uh, wasting anything too much. 
So, ugh, right? Get that going. Get the things covered up. Get all the edges taken care of. Barely tap it. So we have a little bit of green. That little bit of green I do use later. So funny, like tiny little strip, but it's a little strip. It's like a tiny little washi. It's a little border that gives dimension to something when you're doing clusters and layers. So I can't help myself. So we're going to do some inking as usual. We want that to stick out. We're giving that shadow effect. We're giving that worn effect, that vintage effect. Um, and just sort of inking everything definitely gives us depth um, in our work um, when we can. Of course, the easiest thing is, of course, use the vintage ink, vintage photo ink. But you know, in this case, since I'm using beiges and creams, it does work. The green is pretty. And that, that really panned out well. I got really lucky that the spacing on that is almost exact. Um, you know me. I have a hard time for cutting things straight. And then my matting skills, you know, fail me. And I'm like, mm, that's too, you know, that's not perfect. My little OCD side. So this is turning out to be a very another really cute project. I'm really happy with it. So the fun part will be, you know, getting the right cover to it, getting the right width of, uh, width of spine, and, you know, gathering up all the pages for a nice, you know, naked, neutral journal that you guys could just write to, you know, write to the heart's content on it. Um, but I think it'll be a really great summer journal to just write all the fun things in um, and get you, you know, a few months worth of writing in it for once. I know I have a tendency of doing very small one-month journals. Um, or you guys, as things come up in your life, you write in it. So, you know, I, I have a grief journal that, um, yeah, I haven't written in, in quite a few months, which I guess is a good thing. But anyway. All right, so that is covered. I was debating on putting a thumb notch in it, but I didn't really know if I really want to get into that. I know it's an envelope and it might get a little hard, but I think it's something more like you guys could put a piece of memorabilia in there just to store. And it's not something you pull in and out every five seconds. It wouldn't be a constant pull it out and use it because I love the way it's perfectly matted and putting a thumb hole isn't at, it doesn't have that continuous matted feel where the border is continuously wrapped around it. So. I think we're going to leave it. We're going to, we will glue it down in the back. Um, not glue it down all the way in the back so we can make another pocket out of it. I do like the white lace. I think it's going to be really pretty with the other colors underneath it. Um, and I'm just going to go for it. I don't think I'm going to, I probably haven't ha a lot this whole ordeal. And um, so speeding this up, you guys definitely don't have to deal with all the hemming and hawing that I go through. But it's okay. Every once in a while is what we have to do. We just have to dub over our own videos and give you text and maybe... I think I'm in a better set of energy to th right now. Um, it's hard when we're when we're doing things that you know ahead of schedule, and I can't believe I scheduled. I literally filmed two videos for Monday. It should have occurred to me when I had the front done, a majority of the front done, that I probably had gotten ahead of myself. I didn't mark it. I didn't mark it in my book that I'd already done Mondays, or I had done Mondays, and I didn't realize it. I didn't read my own notes that I already vid. You know, if I went to my planner, it would have told it would have told me right then and there. I already filmed Monday's video. Uh, but I had a moment to do something this weekend, and I just, I don't know. I got all confused, guys. I was like, oh, let's do Mondays. No, let's do Wednesdays, which is great because now what I was going to do, what I thought I was going to do for Wednesday is not going to be sort of a um, homage to Gail Gustinelli. She does Scrappy Saturdays, so we're going to, you know, take a page out of her book, and we're going to do a Scrappy masterboard uh saturday and we will work on getting some femur done because i don't have a femur for these kits these kits are all paper kits they are not um they're not full journal kits they're just papers they're just background pages so i really don't have any ephemera for these things um unless the backgrounds were then reused to make a full kit later so then they may or may not go i found a few things to play with but not a lot so we have to make our ephemera for the pockets and the things that i have created so we are though only going to do three sides, two sides and bottom, so we can stick something behind the envelope. Um, you can stick something memor memorabilia-ish, whether it's, you know, tickets or a little note or something that you just want to keep, and what's behind it can be a journal card if I get one. Um, if I'm able to put something back together, I have leftovers, we can do that. Now, it's nice because we are seeing the envelope, we're seeing the lace, we'll see I have more lace in the front, more lace on the edges. We're going to start getting, we're starting to get more and more layers, which is wonderful. It's absolutely awesome. Now it's time to cover the panels. And I've given myself just enough space. I'm hoping I can put the lace on top of the paper, but under the envelope, and you'll find out that you'll, I you know, I, I had a slight mishap on that one too, but you'll see that later. I, got, I fixed it, as usual. Everything can be fixed. So if we've got the green and the beige on the inner flap, because it was really pretty behind all that pretty, um, you know, what are we going to keep doing? So the biggest thing is here. Well, here we go. we got more beige and more green. Of course, it's the other side of the paper. I did already sort of fold 
where I thought I needed to cover the envelope. And I am just doing a base matting um, where I'm just slightly bordering um, the paper on the envelope. At first I thought I was going to cover it completely, but I was like, well, I don't know if that's going to work. So we're going to trim it. And I think we end up just giving it a little bit of matting. Now I could put a thumb notch in here, but every time we put something in and out, it'd be sort of thin and it could catch on the edge of the paper that does is that is not glued down to the actual envelope. So now I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I get that proper envelope notch that we see, right? Um, yes, you're not seeing, I know you're seeing the top of my god awful, but Fisca um, paper cutter. This is the one where you use the blade, this swoop open out. It is an older blade. I have to flip them out pretty soon. Um, it was something that was handed down to me. And I'm like, sweet, when I don't want to pull out the big old, you know, uh, paper cutter, which I use pretty much in the shop side. I use it to cut down all of our packaging and the things that we need. So I don't um, use it on this end very much anymore unless I'm doing really big things, which I've been trying to do off camera. So I pull out the Fisca and just slice things up and down for little ideas to keep things going. Now I did cut it, so we are now going to give just a little bit of a, of a, of a border using the envelope. Um, so it's not a perfect cover and hopefully it'll give us what we need to, you know, I don't know, make that work. I'm just trying to, f I, you, know, you see me here and I'm trying to figure out as I'm inking, how am I going to get this like all but perfect feel so it lines up with the shape of the envelope, you know, invite envelopes have this beautiful notch, but I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I'm like trying to feel it, but of course I can feel the envelope on the other side. So it's getting in the way and I'm trying to work it. And then it occurs to me, duh, <laughs> slip it inside and trace it, trace the opening. Now it's not a perfect fit for some reason, um, even though it should be inside the length, the width of the envelope, it doesn't quite line up, but it's okay. I can make it work. I can so make that work. We, duh, if you put your piece of paper inside your envelope, then you can trace your opening as you see me do. And then you know exactly where to cut. And I am lining it up a little bit to see if there are spots where I need to be a little extra. Um, I can always trace something and then, you know, I can cut the envelope top flaps a little bit if I need to, to blend it. You know, once you lay something down and glue it down, sometimes you have to cut a little something just to make it fit a little perfect, a little, little better. So I'm sort of trying to line it up to where, where my marks were and see how good or bad we're doing. It just doesn't make any sense why that piece of paper does not fit inside when I think when you're eyeballing your outer, you know, your outer ram. So if I do this, um, I can just sort of cut and not too shabby off what I thought I was marking. So we run with it and I can always trim the envelope down to match the paper now. It's like, mm, which way do we want to go with this? It works out really well. I mean, in the end, it works out pretty good. I'm really shocked um, all in all on that one because I was like, hey, I figured this out. And I was, if you listen to me, I was hemming and hawing. It was ridiculous. So glad I sped it up. So even if I overlap it just a smidge, um, and then I'm just going to trim a little bit of the envelope one way or another so that it doesn't stick out. But all in all, it came out really nice. I love the being able to see the envelope, you know, underneath it for another set of color. I really hope you're all doing well. Here we are 20 minutes in and I'm finally asking you. But I'm on a woman on a mission right now. I am like, let's go. Let's get this going. Look, I now have, you know, more scraps. Um, I'll probably make a large circle out of that or we will cut it into a square and it'll be, you know, well, it'll help us um, with our massive amount of, you know, our master board on Saturday. I have pieces everywhere. See all these pieces. Um, we're just going to keep, you know, adding to it. And um, nice thing is some of these pages are already sort of, digitally scrapped so I may tear where it's already scrapped and re-scrap it find a new direction oh my poor kitty wants food and I'm on ca I'm like I'm not pausing again I don't want to do that right now if I find a moment maybe I'll pause but he's sitting here going where's my bowl of food but our stray cat is in and out more often than I like and so he comes in and he sneaks in really quietly and eats Roger's food and I'm like no 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 I'm trying not to feed him I was told by a neighbor that they, he belonged to them haha -ha. Um, but they're really not taking care of him they when they feel like it they put food out and they don't have anywhere for him to really sleep. So he sleeps in my yard most of the time at night. And more times than not, when I'm not paying attention, he sneaks into my house to sleep because he can get into the cat door. He's figured that out. He, figured, he hasn't figured out the cat door to the garage, but he's figured out the cat door in and out, out of the backyard um, into the house. So my cats, when I'm home, have that capability. So it's like, oh, okay, well, so it's been a been fun. Okay, it looks like I did pretty good all in all. Oh. Oh, good. I have a package coming tomorrow. Yay. I don't know what's coming. <laughs> I'm like, UPS is delivering something. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I've had some serious issues with some of my vendors lately and Amazon and a couple others where um, they've played around with 
Anybody else noticing with Amazon, like everything in the world, I had like three totally different things that got rearranged and shifted in their delivery like three times. It's coming late. It's coming early. No, wait, we're sorry. We're backlogged. Let's go back again. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so let's touch up the top and bottom a little bit more. I can't do too much to the bottom because I already have the lace there, but that's okay. And look, there we go. We are, I love that she fits in there nicely. She fits actually beautifully within the curve of everything. And I'm off camera, but I'm just going to trim off the parts of the envelope that you can see. So it lines up with the paper now. And of course, that corner is a little loose. So gosh, every time we touch an envelope, envelopes are extremely um, fragile, by the way. Even though we are layering, like if you don't cover it perfectly, it something always rips. So right now, I'm just going to have to do like some kind of reinforced touch up here. So like we do with our nails, we just layer glue on there and sort of try to cover, create a uh, cap there. A glue patch pretty much is what I'm trying to do and see how that lasts. So we'll see how everything pans out. But I hope you're all doing really well. God, March is not March. God, we're way past March into May. Hope you guys are all doing really well. So let's see if we can figure out our panels now. Like I said, I was debating on this still. Um, but did I end up doing that? No, I don't think I ended up doing that. That's the funny thing is I went back and forth so many times. I had the idea, could flip it around, do it in and out, and I did. I hem and hawed so much on this. I mean, I liked it. There's a possibility that the t stamp, the, the floral, the little bit of, you know, beige. It was great coloring. But I just felt like we weren't using enough of our green and beige paper that we used on that inner, the outer front, the outer uh, panel. And so I was having a hard time to being mixy matchy where a little bit more clustered and um, not clustered, but more eclectic and I'm really struggling with the eclectic of it all. I have a hard time doing it. Yes, I'm pulling all the greens and the beiges and the pinks and the reds or the pink, pinks and pale pinks of the kits to go together. Um, but yeah, it's just debating, like, do I do this one? And then I'm like, well, I could do that and bring it over to the other side. So it's all the way over. But again, we were getting more minty teal, more blue gray than we were doing the yellow green, not blue gray. Yeah, blue gray or bluish green and not so much the yellowy green that was there. And so I didn't know. I really couldn't decide because I love how this pans out. We've got the cream and the pink onto the dark green, darker green and pink onto the beige and green. Ugh, guys, you know, sometimes too many options. Um, I thought about this at first. I like the girl on the bottom and the stripes. It does make it a little bit more matchy matchy to that thing. And I could do him there, which I like the beige. It would come up. Um, we would pretty much the width of that. I mean, it really goes well with our little envelope this time around. Um, I guess we could get more color and dimension with the scrappy. Like our scrappy master board is going to be what's going to bring the color in, I think, um, to the inside, right? I'm going to find those colors. I'm going to find those pieces where I'm going to put them inside because we have these huge journal covers. So, I mean, journal cards. Um, I was trying to get that same feel that we had on the front and on the inside. And I just, because I went with that green and beige for the envelope, I could not seem to get a, figure out what to do. Um, you know, did I do that much kind of color? But that beautiful page that I have right there is the same kit as what's on the envelope. So I just couldn't, I didn't want to be like, I didn't want to use the same kit, but then I didn't want to use the same colors. And so <laughs> look at all my scraps, hordes of scraps, so many scraps. So I gave in, I caved in and we're doing the stripes and the tones we're pulling from that panel. We are going to match it to the other two panels. Um, so that when we put, you know, we can pocket, pocket it that in and, um, what we put in the pockets is going to have our color. It's going to, we're going to pull the more pinks and other colors in our ephemera. And that's just what we're going to do. Cause you are going to see the ephemera. You're going to see half the ephemera cards, um, when you open that up right away, because they are taking up a majority of that space. So I am doing my fun eyeball cutting here. That looks good. Let's try this. So I'm did I did cut a little too far over, so I don't get the whole framework of that one. I don't get to keep all the lacy frame on this page, but that's okay. That's sort of what makes it fun as a you know a, a panel collage that we get to just you know cut it off. And I of course this is where things where the envelopes aren't straight, and neither is my cutting. 
even though we use cutter boards where you think we've got it flat and we realize there's a slight shadow in the black, especially with black cutting boards, that were not perfectly um, like pushed up against the little borders. And we cut a little sideways. So then to clean it up, you end up with it being shorter than you started. And that's sort of a bummer and boring and whatever. So give me one second. I am going to pause, guys. I am so sorry. Okay, we are back again. <laughs> and we're back again. It works. Okay, so we got the panel cut. We got our, our distressed look so we can keep that going. We could have gone one of two ways. I could have gone straight and flat on that. So it, it maybe lined up with the um, envelope. I didn't think about that. Uh, really didn't, but, you know, just, yeah, it's, it's just what it is. It's definitely green based. It's definitely with a little hints of pink and, uh, bright pink and pale pink is going to be the, you know, accents of this. Um, I'm not going to go too teal, I think, with the whole thing, because our, even our fabric is very much green, um, green and gold. So it's going to be definitely a summery botanical. And we're going to get that going. And it is a little bit shorter. I do it again, right? I'm off camera, but. Ugh, I caught my panel a little short, which is okay. It's just what it is. We're going to cover up what's sort of ripped in, again, ripped in the envelope. And so we can reinforce that and make it work. So now I'm just eyeballing top and bottom so I can see exactly what I need. I'm doing my whole little fold it and cut it. Oh, but I may, yeah, I may have to actually get a much larger um, metal, not larger, but a full-blown metal um, cutting board, um, as my mother calls hers, you know, Miss uh, Bertha. Uh, nice, solid, heavy, um, plastic to, you know, metal-based um, cutter that isn't plastic. Plastic's warping. Um, I've gone through two of the, you know, cheap sort of $20 whatever ordeals. And for cutting our large, we'd, we're going through so much packaging and product management for the, you know, for the shop that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wearing out my poor, my poor cutter. So, and I, that way I could then keep the plastic for like cutting my cardboards and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. A lot of stuff going on. All right. So let's get our usual ink it up, get it glued, get it going. So I don't spend all day here with you guys, but I do appreciate you coming along and watching me this Wednesday night, Wednesday morning, uh, crack it on morning. It's late Tuesday night. If you never, haven't gone to sleep yet. Um, and, or, you know, sometime Wednesday, sometime Wednesday morning or Wednesday, depending when you watch your videos. I've gone back to the midnight ordeal for Pacific Standard Time. Um, that way you guys can watch it when you feel the need, whether you're still up, uh, you're late, you're a night owl, and you watch videos to go to sleep or to get your you know, last minute creativity, and then it does help because everybody else is, you know, you guys are then at 3 a.m., 6, and then you watch it at 6, 5, whenever you get up, it's there waiting for you. So we're going to go back to that. I'm just like, eh. See, I'm already seeing ideas. I think we're going to do some kind of, I'm going to do a little bit of something, some little banner piece up there so we can do a little tuck. If I end up with a little bit of scraps and stuff, I may, want, I may tuck a little journal card up in there or a little ephemera piece. Um, I did find some really small journal card um, embellishments um, for a kit that went with one of the papers. I took, sometimes I'll do these background pages and then I'll turn them into full kits also. So you get background pages and then you get more decorative papers um, in the kit sense. So I did find a sheet of um, pretty neutral, you know, cards and stuff that I had made out of some of these pieces. So I probably get to tuck something cute in there. We still do some lace. We do have to do the fabric. You know, the journal cards are pretty big. Once we put the fabric down, it'll help tighten up the pockets. Um, so we have some very large squares to work with here. You know, you see, I mean, I have all the way over um, pretty good. And it's going to keep those pages from being nice and thick and stout too. So Hopefully everything holds up. Hopefully it all holds, right? Mm. These are pretty thick uh, envelopes for once. These gold la laced ones um, are pretty thick. Luckily, I'm using them as a base and they are not wim wimpy. What's going on top sometimes is a little temperamental, but for the most part, they are nice, thick um, invite cards that have that gold on the inside, which I just thought was really pretty. So I couldn't help but, you know, put it together. There are some lines and some folds and stuff, but that's okay. And we have a little, we're a little off kelter, kelter skelter in the bottom, but oh, room. I mean, I do love the green. I can't help it. I do love that the inside is sort of matchy matchy. It is, you know, it does make me happy. I can't help it. And the front actually looks like it all goes together. You, you know, I can't complain. It's, it's all good. We just went definitely more of a yellow green. 
um, yellow base green than a blue base green in, in this whole um, ephemera piece. So we'll do a banner up there to tuck something into it. I need to put the fabric across the top. It gives us two large envelopes to do two very square, large, large journal cards. So you're going to have plenty of writing space in this whole journal when we're done. Oh my goodness. So I've got quite a bit of ephemera to make to, po to put in some of the pockets and then you have your, you know, many, many papers to write on. That is the goal this year or this round. So let's get the lace in there. So um, I've got about, mm, I don't know, less than 10 minutes here, but I am taking the mesh off this one because I don't need it. If I did it first and was tucking it underneath all the paper and the envelope, I would have used the mesh to help glue it down. Um, but I'll use that mesh for clustering later. I don't put it to waste. I don't throw it away. Um, I think I even use it, I use it right there on the, on the, ta on the top of the envelope, um, coin envelope. I end up um, using it for some texture, but yeah, I will always, I will always use it. I will never not use it. I'm, and I need that little bit in the front anyway, so it works for me. So I'll do that and I'll cut it off so that way I can put it aside. I think I can put it there, you know, to layer things up and I do put it on the coin envelope. So I've got an idea for that over there, which I love when my, my things go off to the side. So I may put that, create that cluster on YouTube or something and throw it up there. I got some I have some shorts to do for you guys of little tidbits that you get to see me still do, but um, not take up a whole other video for it, right? So I'm going to try and get the glue under there without gluing down the envelope before I'm ready. I'm putting glue on top of the paper, <laughs> but you'll see. I go to put stuff under there and realize that um, I can't get under the envelope perfectly because the panel is gluing that down. I was like, Duh. So I make a little slit where the paper is, where it ma where it meets the envelope. I make a little slit so that I can actually get lace on top of the paper, but under the envelope. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, huh? I guess I could have done it differently, but I didn't want to completely cover up the lace with the paper too. I thought, well, no, it'd be sort of pretty over the paper. And the lace, of course, bunches up on me. It doesn't want to tuck under. <sighs> always trials and tribulation. Always trials. Always trials. Always challenges. But I guess it's not, you know, art is challenging, right? Or it can be challenging? I don't know. It shouldn't have to be challenging, but oh, thank gosh for fabric tack. So I can tweak this and make it work for us. I'm like, no, 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 wait, come on. Do do what I need you to do. Get more glue down. Get it to stay. Ugh. I'm getting there. I, I just don't want it too wonky. I want to make sure it looks somewhat straight up and down. It's okay to be a little off, but this is going to be on the outside edge, like or right next to the spine. So it may lay over, and when we open the the journal it's not going to really get in the way it's soft enough that it, it should fold with fold with the journal cover it shouldn't get in the way um because the spine is going to line up right there with the the lace i don't think i'll wrap it o over the lace i mean over the spine there's not enough of it i don't think i'll do it that way i think i want it to stick out but we'll see how that of course evolves as um you know i actually glue this down to the fabric once the cover itself is created so and i do think we're going to need at least a half inch to one inch spine, you know, press board cover with padding and fabric. So that is the tentative goal here. Got a lot of covers to make. Oh my goodness. I've got my snow snowflake one and I have this one and I got to do the wrap piece for the, for the black and white. So lots going on. Uh, there we go. So it may fold around. It should be okay up against that spine when we open and close this, open and close the journal cover. See, so there's a little piece that sort of brings that that lace over just like that fabric will be on the inside so it brings that inside and it's the actual physical inside of the journal right it's the inside uh, cover of the journal so we get to bring that fabric over a couple times you know in a couple different ways to make a nice consistency something continuous throughout the throughout the project so we'll do that and let's we're gonna find some of uh, timeless timeless crochet for use um, flowers from Claudia um, wonderful flower maker. She just did some of the prettiest applique flowers. Oh, I think my mom got a bunch of them. Um, if you're new to me and you're not sure, Lorette Chandler at Vintage Paper Girl is my mom, my, my partner in this shop. Ooh, see now those would look really pretty with the front cover. Um, but not so much when I have the hotter, the brighter pink. So I feel like I want to bring more of the more medium tone to brighter pink maybe. Um, I, of course, my natural instinct is to go yellow, but then I don't want to, you know, then again, right, we're getting too matchy-matchy or not enough color variants. Um, I love this pretty one. It's really pretty on that front. 
put that in. I'm like, nope, here we go again, where I'm like, hmm, what will work? I may use that yellow on something else. Maybe something that doesn't have as much yellow. This is great. It definitely pulls the pinks from that paper. And that one's bigger, so I could bring the pink down there. Just options, people. Too many options. <laughs> How many times can I do this? What do I want to do? I do have a couple pieces that I, I hemmed and hawed over trying to decide. Do I go smaller? Do I go bigger? Do I keep that up there? Do I just do a little something there? Both of those pull the, from all the different hues, from that pale pink to the brighter pink that's sitting there. Even the peach, it looks pretty. So I really can't go wrong with any of those. I don't want a small one on the top. So yeah, see I was like, oh green. Little bits of something. I can't help myself. I will border and deal do do detail no matter. But I want the bigger one up front to sort of help with that count of three, two pieces of fabric and you know, but and a flower to help sort of make that cluster in that top corner. Since it's just an extra panel that's just there. You know, we want it to yeah, no, little just isn't enough. So Saw some things, but I think I've got what I'm looking for. As much as I like the yellow, yeah, I think it's just going to be too much. So we're going to pull the pink, and I will have to pull these out for more of the ephemera where it doesn't get caught. We'll have to put more flowers in our very botanical flip-flop envelope topper here. It's quite a mouthful for what this is. It's envelopes. It's a flip-flop. It's an ephemera topper to the cover <laughs> of a large journal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you coming along and watching, liking, loving, commenting. Follow me along on this crazy journal journey that I have going and um, all that goes with it. I, I really, really do appreciate it and watching this crazy thing that I'm dubbing over and trying to work with and making the most of. Oh, but I couldn't waste the video. Just couldn't waste the video. It's a great stage to what we're doing. At least you didn't get to hear all of it. I have plenty. Like I said, we have a lot of cards to make. So a master board scrappy Saturday is definitely coming, you know, coming up next. So I know we, you know, if you watch Gail Gasnelli, you don't need another scrappy Saturday, but it's what I'm working on and it's there to fill the space. If you aren't used to that uh, master boards or scrap work, um, this is, you know, you can watch me work on it and see what we can turn, you know, um, like I said, master boards um, of scrapped paper, what we can turn them into. So I will add the fabric before the next video and uh, we'll be ready to go. So I really do appreciate it all. Love you all very much. And I hope you have a wonderful week as we finish off. I will see you this weekend. And um, that is about as far as we're going to get. I'm, I don't think there's much else to talk about. Oh, see, here I go. See, I'm like, wait, 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 last minute. As I'm talking, probably the same thing that I'm doing right now. I'm talking to you guys. Do this, do that. Oh, hey, let me add this while I'm walking out. It's like, hmm. I am literally crafting my way out of the video, so here we go. Layers, mesh, fabric, scraps, the works. Never waste anything, I guess. Use it all till you're done with the project, and then you could decide to scrap it, or you can, um, you know, recycle it. Scrap it, recycle it, reuse it. Ugh, make a pile. It can be done. Love you all. I'll talk to you all very, very soon.